Good morning. I promised you I would go live at 10 o'clock and I'm here at 10 o'clock. Check me right out. I'm so proud of myself for being able to actually show up on time for you today. Um, thank you for your input with regards to some of your tarot pain points. I know that um, a couple of you have answered me. I'd like to get a little bit more interaction in the group. So if any of the rest of you, it doesn't matter how experienced you are, there's always something that still is a pain when it comes to the tarot. So pop it in to the, the post or just pop a new post in if you want and just ask the question. Um, what I hope to do is to build on these lives more and more frequently and to um, jump into this group on a more regular basis to answer your questions and to give you more value. Um, the beginners class is starting again on the 1st of March and it's going to be online. If any of you want to jump in as a refresher, get in touch with me um, and we'll have a chat about how that could work for you um, because you can never learn enough about the tarot and sometimes when you revisit things it's also a really good way of you know getting to grips with something that you maybe previously didn't understand before <clears throat> so excuse me so firstly um the questions that had come up this time around uh there was a question about reversals or sort of a point that reversals are a pain i will do a separate live video on that um hopefully next week for you um reversals are difficult but we'll talk about those in another time this particular video is about tarot spreads the layouts how you lay your cards where you put them in order to get the answer to the question but before we even think about the layout what we need to do is that we need to consider what questions we're asking when you approach your tarot cards if you are not um if you're not asking a good question then you'll not get a clear answer. So that's the, um, the crux of all of this. And I think that that's the biggest mistake that I made when I first started out. And I think it's the biggest mistake I see a lot of people making is that they don't really know what they want to ask the cards or they don't really know why they're doing the reading. Or someone says to them, here, I, I hear you can do tarot cards, do us a wee reading. And you're like, well, what's your question? And they're like, oh, I don't know, just, just see what's there. But that's useless because that doesn't give the cards anything to answer. And this is where the biggest myth is about tarot, that people think it's a fortune telling tool. It's not. The best focus you can have is to keep your focus on the present and on your journey ahead. Because your future is not set in stone. Your future is not, you know, mapped out for you exactly. It depends on the choices you make every day and the um, actions that you take every day. That will impact your future. <clears throat> Excuse me. Every time I do a live, I get a wee frog in my throat. Excuse me a moment. So, you need a question. You need to understand that there has to be a reason for your reading. If you approach the tarot just with a vague sense of, I don't really know what I want to know, then you get that back from the cards because if you don't, it's like getting into your car without knowing where you're going. You, you know, you always have a destination in mind or at least an idea of where you want to go and the purpose of your journey. So what's the purpose of your reading? So that's the, that's the first question I would ask myself whenever I lift my cards. What's the purpose of this reading? What am I trying to achieve? Because that will then shape which particular spread I use or which layout I decide to go for. And to be perfectly honest, lately, I usually just make up my own, depending on the question, but I'll talk about that later. Um, please do leave. If you're here live, great. Say hi and let me know you're here. If you're not and you're watching the replay on this and you have questions that come up, will you pop them into the comments? Because I will come back in and have a look through and answer what I can for you. And again, if there's any other tarot questions that you want answered, pop them in the comments. OK, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Um, so let's think about this. What's the purpose of our reading? Now, there's different reasons you would be doing a tarot reading. It may be that it's just personal for yourself, in which case you're just drawing a card for the day, maybe. Um, that's easy because you don't need to worry about the spread. And in that instance, the purpose of the purpose of your, your pulling a card for the day is simply to get some insight as to, you know, the main theme of the day for you. Um, may also be that it's 
how you're learning your cards, that you're keeping a tarot journal and that you're pulling a card maybe at the end of the day and seeing if you can reflect it back on how your day went. So that's, that's one particular thing. The other times you may be doing a reading um, may be that someone has asked you to do a reading for them. Great, we'll need a question for that one. Or it may be that you're deciding to do a reading for yourself because you have a question or a decision to make. Or it may be that maybe it's a seasonal time of year, for example, a solstice or equinox or it's your birthday or it's the new year and you're doing a year ahead reading or a birthday reading or a solstice or equinox reading. And there are different spreads for those and I'll touch on those later. So let's assume you're doing a reading either for yourself or you're doing a reading for someone else and there's a question involved. How do we get good questions? How do we formulate these questions into something that will make sense? You need to try and avoid yes, no answers. Okay. Um, the tarot doesn't like to give just simple yes or no. Okay. Now, yes, there are some more positive cards that could indicate a yes, and there are some more negative cards that could indicate a no. But generally speaking, there are so many shades of grey in the tarot that you will not know whether it is a distinct yes or a distinct no. What I would suggest you do is rather than asking for yes, no, and then getting really frustrated when you don't know the answer or it doesn't give you, that's really ambiguous and you can't be sure, is to ask an open-ended question. Okay, so ask an open-ended question. If you may have seen in the group, I have shared a little small PDF that has some ideas in it. And at the end of that PDF, the last page, um, on that page, you can see questions. You can see good examples of poor questions and examples of good questions. So try and focus on an open-ended question. I'll give you some examples in a minute. Um, it's also important that you focus on your on yourself. Focus on if you're if you're doing a reading for yourself, that you focus on yourself. If you're doing a reading for someone else who's asked you, that they focus on themselves. Okay. Don't be asking about third parties who've got nothing, who aren't in the room, okay? Because that's a breach of privacy and it's also not ethically correct to do that. So don't be asking questions about other people. So I see people come all the time and they're like, do you know, I think my partner's got feelings for someone else. Can you look at the cards and tell me that? Tell me what's going on. Does my partner have feelings for someone else? And I'll be like, no, I can't do that reading for you because it's not about your partner. It's about this reading's about you. You're with me now. So better question in that situation would be, well, how can I strengthen the bond between me and my partner? How can I improve our relationship? How can we work together to make this better? You know, um, can the cards show me where there are obstacles in my relationship? OK, so you can see that you're taking responsibility, you're keeping it personal. This is another important thing. That it's important that you take ownership of the situation. Uh, and personal responsibility so don't ask questions like you know when will I win the lottery or will I win the lottery if you're thinking about you know financial problems and you're thinking when can I win will I win the lottery so it'll be rich you might want to ask a better question that would be what can I do to improve my financial situation or what what's blocking me from financial success or what does financial success look like for me you know, because you can use the cards to really dig deep into a situation that's bothering you. It doesn't have to just be, as I said earlier, it's not a fortune telling tool. The tarot is an analytical tool for self-expression and analysis and looking into things. So take ownership of the situation, personal responsibility. And the other thing when formulating a question is to focus on the present and your journey into the future as opposed to what's coming okay because not what the future looks like because as i said earlier your future changes depending on every thought action and belief that you have day to day so if someone says to you they can read your future and tell you what's going to happen they're lying because it's not set in stone yes things may occur that way if you stay on the path you're, you're on and the tarot can give you an indication of if you're on this path, where will you likely end up? But it can't navigate exactly what's coming. So 
also as well, sometimes people are still stuck in the past and they're like, did I do the right thing? This was the situation I find myself. Could you tell, ask the cards, did I do the right thing? Well, the cards are going to give you a bit of an ambiguous result again there because the past's done. You can't make any changes. There's nothing that can be done with it. Whereas the present is fluid and you can get an insight. So a better thing to do, better question to ask in that respect was rather than did I do the right thing? Did I act in the right way? Would have been to say, what do I need to do right now to improve this situation? Or what can I work on right now to make the most of this situation I find myself in? And that brings it into the present, which in turn then helps you have a clearer answer and a clearer result from the tarot. So those are just some ideas. Um, some good questions, you know, general questions might be, what do I need to know or change right now about myself or about this situation? Uh, what's the biggest obstacle that stands in my way right now? What lesson do I need to learn in order to overcome this particular challenge? Okay. Um, other things, maybe what is the biggest influence in my life right now? Uh, what are my greatest strengths or what are my greatest weaknesses? Um, what should I be focusing on right now? And those sorts of questions you can use then as journal prompts so you can then start to create journal entries and ask that question, lay cards in whichever way you want to and I'm going to get to layouts in a moment and you can start to maybe journal and understand and use the cards then for self-development and that's where their real strength lies and that's when they'll start to open themselves up to you and the more you work with your cards and working with the answers and quest, you know, questions and answers that you want to get from them. The more you do that, the more the cards will open to you and the more confident then you will become in your reading. It's natural to feel nervous when you first start out. And even the most experienced readers have moments of just, really, I'm not sure I can do this. And it happens to people all the time. So it's about just connecting in with your cards as regularly as you can. Make it part of your practice, your daily or weekly practice. Have some time set aside that you play with your cards and that you work with them and you journal with them, meditate with them and understand them. And that will improve your skills as a reader. Um, there's other questions, love tarot questions. You know, it's coming up to Valentine's Day. This might be something that some of you might want to be thinking about. You know, how can I attract a partner that will align with my highest self? Or what stands in the way of me finding love? How can I strengthen the relationship that I have with my partner? How can I best overcome this issue, whatever the issue may be in my relationship? Or what connects us in this relationship? You know, so again, can you see those questions? They're open-ended, they're good, they're insightful. There's no yes, no's, okay? Um, if you've got a work or career issue, you know, what career or line of work can I go to that will be the most fulfilling for me? It might be useful if you're struggling to decide what direction you want to take in life or what blocks me from achieving my full potential when's the right time for me to make a career change when you get into timings with the tarot it's a little bit of a more experienced um, thing but there's lots of different ways and again I can come we'll, we'll work through that it's, we touch on it in some of the intermediate and advanced classes but um, we'll certainly I'll put that on the list as something else because I know timing is a big issue um, what actions can I take right now that will help me further my career? How can I best communicate with my current employer? Do you see again how those questions can open up lots of different avenues for discussion and understanding and analysis in your reading then, depending on then where you play, lay your cards? Um, and financial things as well. What's my biggest financial obstacle right now? What's my attitude towards finances? Where are my, what are my limiting beliefs? Where did they come from? Okay, how can I find material success? Again, open-ended questions that are very useful just to get you started. So then comes the joy of, well, what spread do I use? What layout? So tarot spreads are simply just the position of the cards. Okay, and you don't have to use one that someone else has created. You can make up your own and you can decide which way you want to do that but we'll talk about that in a sec the best spread 
fits the time frame you have for your reading. So if you only have 10 or 15 minutes to do a reading for yourself, there is no point in starting to lay out a big Celtic cross spread or a 21 card Romany spread because they're going to take you quite some time to read and understand and navigate if you're going to do them the justice they deserve. So likewise as well, if you have a paying customer who is coming for an hour long reading, you're not going to just lay out three cards because you'll not have much to say after maybe the first 20 minutes. So it fits the time frame. The best spread it fits the time frame you have. It also fits your experience level. So again, if you're starting out, a 21 card Romani spread is going to be very overwhelming. Or the 10 card Celtic cross can even be overwhelming when you're first starting out because there's so many cards and remembering what goes where and why and how. So again, it needs to fit your experience level. You also want it to kind of fit in with the theme of what you're asking. So you need to be able to sort of see that the position of the cards or what you decide to make each card refer to will actually answer the question that you have asked. And it also has to be a spread that you enjoy or like to use because if you don't like the spread, it'll come across. Okay, so if you struggle with, I know initially when I first started out, I really struggled with the Celtic cross till I got a real handle on the flow of how it how it, when I was first taught, I didn't like how it was taught and I struggled with it until I discovered a different way, which is the way I teach it now. But there's a different flow and you can see the little mini readings within it and you can break it down into little bits and that <clears throat> helped me in lots of different ways. Um, so your spread, your spread in your tarot cards can be as simple as a single card pull for the day a three card spread, past, present, future, mind, body, spirit. You know, what, what do I need to help my mind? What do I need to help my spirit? What do I need to help my body? You know, there's three cards, advice for each element. You know, past, present, future. What's led me to this situation that I find myself in? What's, what's the subconscious or underlying beliefs that have led me here, the actions I've taken? Where am I right now? And what... If I continue on this path, where will it take me to in the immediate future? You know, what's the outcome of my actions right now? Or it might be pros, cons and advice. If you've just got a three card thing. If you want to take it out slightly bigger, then a five card reading is really pretty good for getting a handle, a guidance on decision making. You know, so if you have a choice to make um or a decision to make on something you might be wanting to lay five cards and you can lay them in any way you can lay them across in a straight line you can make a fancy cross with them you can lay them in a in a smiley face it doesn't matter okay you can lay them you're in charge of your reading so you can lay them wherever you want okay so maybe a simple five card reading for beginners might be you know card one indicates you and what's going on for you right now card two might give you an idea of the actions that you need to take um, in order to progress with the situation that you're in. Card three might indicate the obstacles that you're going to face. And card four will give you maybe the outcome if you take the actions presented to you. And card five then maybe will show the impact that that outcome will have on you. You know, so there's a simple five card reading that you could make work for you for example let's take um you know um you know what lesson do i need to learn to overcome this challenge right now you know okay well card number one would indicate your personal beliefs about the challenge card number two might um indicate you know the lesson because you're asking the question, what lesson do I need to learn? So card two indicates the lesson. Card three might indicate, you know, any limiting beliefs you have, which is causing you to doubt. Card four then maybe will be the action that you need to take and maybe card five will be the outcome. So can you see then that how, depending on the question, you can facilitate a reading and a layout of cards to answer that question in your own way? Um, 
you can again do a nice five card reading for potentially I mentioned earlier like a solstice or equinox reading or you know a seasonal reading and the solstices and equinoxes give us a quarterly check-in point throughout the, the year and they're a nice way to do this so um, you could potentially have five cards theme for the season card number one card number two the interaction with the darkness or light of the season um, card three how to find positivity in the season that you're in uh, card four what to leave behind in the previous season that's just left and card five what you still need to bear in mind as the wheel of the year continues to turn so there again a nice simple five card reading laid out in whichever way you want now by all means if you're a little bit more experienced and you want to lay deeper you know if i'm doing a paid reading i tend to use a celtic cross because it, it usually covers pretty much everything the horseshoe as well is another one that is pretty good and the romany spread the 21 card romany spread is massively brilliant but it's just it's got 21 cards so to be honest i don't usually have the time point for that because that reading is going to take well over an hour an hour and a half maybe the two hours to go through a full romany and as i say the romany is covered in, in our in our um later tarot classes you can you can sign up for those if you want but the celtic cross the 10 card celtic cross is a pretty pretty decent spread um, and it begins with a card in the center and the card in the center indicates what's going on for you right now you know so Celtic Cross is good for looking at an in-depth analysis of what's going on or an in-depth analysis of the question that you're asking. Um, and again, because you're using open questions, then this is good because it can answer them. And you can change the you can change the meaning of each of the cards if you want. But generally it means um, card number one, what's going on for you right now? Card number two sits across that. What's blocking you right now? What's standing in your way? Okay, what's holding you back? Card number three underneath, what are your belief patterns? What's your subconscious belief patterns? You know, and the past conditioning that has led to this. Card number four sitting behind here. Then that would be the past situation that has led you to this situation in your life. Card number five at the top is like the potential of what can be achieved or the potentials or what you're aspiring to. Card six is what's coming ahead. Um, seven, eight, nine and ten that run up the side then in the staff. Seven, internal influences. Eight, external influences. Card nine, hopes, dreams, fears. And card ten, the overall outcome and the answer to your question. So there's lots of different nuances and ways of reading that and we do go into that in quite a lot of depth in the intermediate classes where you can look into that and see what's happening. But your layout generally can be made to fit the question so don't feel hemmed in or under pressure to decide what you're doing and what layout you're going to use because if you start to feel restricted and stressed about it then that will impact your reading so you need to be just nice and calm and relaxed remember as well don't just grab your cards and start throwing them out to on the table the read you need to connect with them take a few deep breaths allow yourself just to connect in shuffle the cards consider the question as you're shuffling them allow them just to naturally come into an order that works and then lay them what i also find really helpful sometimes is that i will take a piece of paper and a pen and i will write the question at the top and then i go well, how can i answer this question you know for example if i have a decision to make i'll maybe write the question at the top you know um, give me an insight into the best way forward in this situation um, or i'll maybe have two options you know for example a few years back when i was deciding whether to stay in paid employment or whether to go full-time self-employed i put two columns on a page and i put employment and self-employment and then i put um the pros for each so card one card two was the pros for each three and four were the cons for each card five were um i can't remember i think it was something like um advice or obstacles or something and then cards the next set of cards were the advice and then actions to take and then overall decision you know so i kind of had like a bit of a, a u-shape going on 
doesn't matter how I laid it out. You could lay them out along horizontally. It doesn't matter. Again, it's personally, if I write my question out and then design my reading around it, I find that helps. You can do the same with the Celtic cross, you know, so you can ask a question and then change what each card position means. So long as you set that intention before you begin and then don't change your mind once you're reading the cards. And you also need to remember that whatever position the card falls in, you need to read it in that position. So if the card falls and it's about external influences, then the theme of that card is external influences. So read it accordingly. Don't turn around and say all of a sudden it's about the future or it's about the past because it's not. It's about the external influences. So that's why you label what the cards are going to mean. And that's why you decide in advance what they're going to mean so that when you lay the cards then you've got that flavour running through them and that then helps to answer the question. Remember, ultimately, your job as a tarot reader is to be a storyteller and to tell the story of the cards, to interpret them. You know, and again, in the classes, we go through this and we make passes of the cards. What do they mean? Just initially, let's just think what they mean. Let's now do a second pass. How did that card get to here, to here, to here? What, what story? Are there connections between the cards? Do they bounce off each other? Do they pull apart? Is there conflict in this reading? Is there something that's holding back? What, when you look overall at the cards, are there patterns forming? Are there lots of numbers forming? Are there particular colours? Is there lots of major arcana, lots of minor arcana? So you can see it's so much more than just a question and a layout. But that's not to overwhelm you. If you're starting out, if you're one of the new beginners in the group and you're starting out, then please start gently and do I would suggest a three card spread to begin with and then you can extend that out maybe to make it a five card then a seven card then a ten card and then if you want to go big and into the Romany then by all means and um, to be perfectly honest I rarely do a Romany reading because they're so big and I rarely have the time so it's you know it's entirely up to you but again my best advice to you is spend some time working on your question and then design your own spread depending on the question. There's also a wealth of spreads out there. All you have to do is Google tarot spreads and you'll get a million and one. And you can tailor any of them to suit your question. Okay, so don't feel that you have to, you know, I, my go-to spread is the tarot, uh, is the Celtic cross for the tarot. That's my go-to spread. That is the one I use for the majority of my readings. However, there will be times when I will flip it out and do the horseshoe instead, particularly if it's a decision that needs to be made. I tend to use the Celtic cross for things like how, how can I, or give me an insight into. And I tend to use the likes of the horseshoe spread um, for decision making because I can put pros and cons and obstacles and advice and all sorts of things into that nice horseshoe spread with the seven cards. So again, let me know in the comments if you have questions. What spread do you like to use? Tell me which ones you like to use and which ones you don't like. Tell me if there's any other pain points that you want me to cover. I will do some video work and some lessons on timings and again on reversals as well because reversed cards can cause even the most experienced tarot reader serious angst. And I know a lot of people make sure their cards are all the right way up but somehow they still sneak in there. So. For me, that's, that's, that would be significant if I saw a, an upside down card on my deck. If I knew that I had deliberately put them all the right way up, then that's telling me something. But the reversals are a story for another time. Um, let me know what you think. Also as well, as I said earlier, the beginner's tarot class, the eight-week beginner's tarot class, is going to be starting again on Monday, the 1st of March. It will be running online due to the restrictions. Um, so it will be live online with me across Zoom or some other video streaming platform, depending. It's usually Zoom, but I'm looking at a couple of others because Zoom has been a wee bit, a wee bit difficult lately. It's been patchy. Um, so I'm looking at a couple of other options, but um, it will be on a live basis with me on a Monday night from 7 till 9. It's suitable for everyone, but primarily beginners. Uh, the first eight weeks then there will be a four week intermediate and then a four week more advanced course and i will then be looking at potentially doing more regular check-ins with this group but if you want to join the, the eight week live tarot class with me let me know if you've done it before 
but it's been ages and you want to reconnect and start to get a fresh look, then talk to me as well. Um, if you've done the course before, I'll give you a bit of a discount if you want to join again, because um, obviously you've done it previously, but you're more than welcome to jump in as a refresher. If you want to, just simply let me know. But hopefully this has been helpful for you. Um, as I say, download the wee um, PDF that I created that has most of this information that I talked about in that for you. And if you have more questions, stick them in the comments and let me know how you are. I would like to see more interaction in this group and for everybody just to jump on board. Um, that's the whole point of having a tarot tribe, is to have people who can support each other because otherwise it can be a lonely old place sitting with your cards on your own and having nobody to share them with. So let's um, see if we can build this community into a supportive community where we can all help each other with our pain points in the tarot, where we can suggest good spreads that we've used that were brilliant for answering a particular question. And likewise as well, if you have been asked a question in the tarot and you've got your cards laid out and you're struggling to interpret them, take a photo, share the question and pop it into the group. You're all capable of putting that into the group and we can all jump in then and give you our opinions and our thoughts on it. Um, so that's what it's here for. Anyway, enough of your time this morning. Thank you very much for joining me if you were able to make it live. If not, hopefully you'll enjoy the recording and leave me a wee comment and let me know what your thoughts were and what else you would like to see in these more regular lives. I'm going to try and do them. I'm not going to necessarily promise one a week because I've said that before and then I've only so many hours in the day. So I will try and do at least a couple a month. I'll put it that way. But ideally I would like to do one a week. But again, it depends on your on your needs and whether you want me to or not. If I don't get much interaction from anybody, then I can. Is it worth my while to do it? So let me know you're here. Let me know that you're about and let me know that you find some value in this. And I'll be in touch with you really soon with information on reversals. Thanks.